and this is BioPhoenix here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a PS2 game, and that happens to be Eternal Quest. And believe it or not, this is not a sequel to the game Eternal Eyes on the PS1. But oddly enough, on both game covers, the font looks very similar. So this game is developed by Tamsoft and published by Midas Interactive, and it was released in 2004 in Europe. But as you can tell with the company and the publisher of this game, it is indeed a simple series game. Hooray, we're taking a look at another game in the dark side of the PS2 library. And speaking of the name of the game, in Japan it's called Simple Series 2000 Volume 20 The Dungeon RPG. Or what's written out in English on the cover is THE RPG. So wow, could this actually be the RPG of all RPGs? And that should also explain what kind of game this is. Yes, this is indeed an RPG, but it's more like a roguelike RPG. And it's the kind of roguelike RPGs where like everyone moves around at like the exact same time. So now onto the game's story and man, you gotta get a load of this. So there is a shogun that summons a ninja that happens to be your character, and his reasoning is that the land has gone to shit and his uh, princess has been kidnapped and you gotta rescue her and she happens to be stuck in uh, 50 different dungeons. So it's the basic of what you get. But honestly, when it comes to a game from the Simple series, I didn't expect much. Unless you're talking about the Sniper 2 story, because everyone knows that that story is just fucking amazing. But anyways, let's start talking about the game's gameplay, and like I already said, it's a roguelike. So just like your typical roguelike games, all the dungeons are randomly generated, you pick up many items that are scattered around the area, and enemies always do respawn within the maze. Although one common trope within roguelikes that this game does not have is that there is no uh, hunger meter in the game. But instead, there is weapon durability, so yes, your weapons in this game can break. So the main objective is to go through all the floors and clear them out, level yourself up a shitload, and try and rescue the princess, which is at the very last floor. Now, it may sound easy, and yes, roguelikes are very well known for being very fucking brutally hard, but this game takes that to a whole other level. Now, no, this game doesn't start out easy and then, like, gets difficult as you get farther through it, because that would make too much sense. Because holy shit. Starting out with this game, there is a very high risk of getting fucked by a hoe. And no, I'm talking about the gardening tool, not the other one. Yeah, not even joking, sometimes when you first start out in this game, if you start in like the room with like too many enemies, or hell, sometimes it can even happen with just one enemy around, you'll die. And there's nothing you can do about it. At that point, you might as well just reset the game. And the reason why that the beginning part of this game is as hard as it is, is because the leveling is just really unbalanced. Because at level 1, if you get hit 3 times, you're dead. And to make it worse, is that it takes a while to level up in the game. Now thankfully, you do regenerate some health as you do walk sometimes, but even at that, you're still gonna be completely fucked. So you gotta find some decent equipment as soon as possible, because the stuff you have on, pfft, it's gotta go. Also, when it comes to the menu, you're gonna see one thing called jewelry, and you're wondering what the fuck this is. Well, apparently, when you click on this, it's actually a magic attack. I don't get why they call it jewelry when they just could've called it, like, magic or something. I guess it's supposed to be a magical jewelry, I suppose, but, you know. Because when I first saw it, I thought it was just supposed to be for equipment for, like, you know, like, earrings, rings, and all that kind of shit. But one last thing I do want to mention before I get moving on to the other things is that... So the healing items in this game are called spheres, and the description for them says, A regular snack for those that dwell in darkness recovers little strength. So is this game trying to tell you that, like, ninjas eat spheres? I know it's not that big of a deal considering there is many great games out there that have not had the best translation work ever, but did they really have to call it spheres? I mean, I guess at that point you might as well call it circular objects. Alright, so with that out of the way, now let's get on to the game's controls, and well, for roguelike standards, they're not confusing in any way, although I do feel that the animations, though, are way too slow. So whenever you're fighting something, it feels a lot longer than it should. But the button layout is fine. I mean, when it comes to these roguelikes that are kinda like a half turn-based, half action RPG, I mean, I can't really make too much complaints about it, I mean, everything does work okay. 
But yeah, that's really my only complaint, is that the animations are just too slow for the gameplay. So now, as for the game's graphics, well, for 2004, hell, even just for PS2 in general, this looks like shit. So all the backgrounds are super dull, and even all the characters are also very dull, and the most common enemy you're gonna be fighting are flying turkeys with broken necks. And even certain parts of the dungeon will just randomly turn like rainbow and very tie-dye and very psychedelic. But even at that, you can just tell they just plastered a bunch of random colors on to make it look different, but really though, we're not fucking stupid. Anyone that grew up playing uh, Back to the Future on NES where all they did was just change the color swap of all the levels, it's the exact same thing here. So yeah, the graphics in this one are just really fucking bad, even for PS2. Hell, even for the Simple series, this is just awful. So now, as for the game's music, well, before I talk about it, how about I just show you a little bit of a preview? Okay, that's a surprise, this game's music is actually pretty fucking rad. Okay, to be serious though, it's not amazing, but I do find it to be kinda catchy, and of course I do kinda like the way how it sounds. But it doesn't really fit a game like this, I mean, when you think of a ninja game, do you think of like, hardcore techno music? But you know what they should have done with this game? They shouldn't have called it Eternal Quest, because, well, that doesn't really sound very ninja-like either. But you know what? Because this game has, like, a hardcore techno soundtrack, and there's also a lot of bright colors that makes it look like a rave, they should have named this game Ninja Dance Party Adventure. I mean, if you see a game with this cover art randomly out of nowhere, you buy that shit. But I'm sure as you might suspect from here, that name is just way too awesome for this game. Now, if you hate your life and you want to buy this game, it usually goes for about $5 to $10, although I have seen a sealed one for $20. But even paying $5 for this game is paying too much. Honestly, I think the developer should pay you to play this game. So now, with my overall thoughts on Eternal Quest, this has got to be one of the worst that I've ever played. For obvious reasons, yes, the game is not fun whatsoever. I can't find anything fun about this game. Even if you happen to get lucky and get decently far into it, and once you start getting some good equipment, the game just isn't satisfying whatsoever. It's bland, it's boring, and it really doesn't offer anything at all. Just as an example, when I reviewed uh, Ocean Commander on the PS2, it was a generic shoot-em-up that really didn't need to be on the PS2, but it did at least have one thing going for it. But where this, I can't think of anything. So out of all these subcategories that I can put this game into is that it is probably the worst ninja game that I have ever played. Even the worst Ninja Gaiden game or the worst Shinobi games are better than this. I'd even say that the last Ninja on the NES is even better than this fuck turd. And I'd also say that it's the worst roguelike RPG. Now I have enjoyed other roguelike games like the Mystery Dungeon games such as like Shiren the Wanderer and all that kind of stuff. But even a game like Baroque on PS2, which I have reviewed in the past, is still better than this fucking game because even though I didn't like that game very much, it at least did offer some unique things that were kind of interesting. And then it gets worse, is that I think this game is also the worst RPG on the PS2. I think most people know that the PS2 offered a lot of great RPGs. Some of them are not as great as you might think, but I think there is more good than bad. But even with all the ones that are not good on PS2, I think this one is even worse than all the other ones that I've played. And as for the final category, this game is probably the worst RPG that I've ever played. Seriously, even Yu-Gi-Oh! Falsebound Kingdoms on GameCube is better than this. And for the longest time, I always considered that one to be one of the worst that I've ever played personally, but goddamn, this game just takes it to a whole other level. So yeah, this game is the worst game in four different ways. 
If I still did the ratings on my channel, I would easily give this a 1 out of 10. But, you know how that goes. This game just fucking sucks. It's too fucking hard. There's no fun in it whatsoever. And if this bitch that you gotta rescue at the end of the game happens to look like Lo Shirai, who is, by the way, a very uh, good-looking female wrestler from Japan, I would still avoid this game for being AIDS. Oh, and one last thing I do want to mention about the back of the cover. If you read the last part of it, it says... This is a never-ending journey into the pits of the demon world. Get ready to face your worst nightmare. Oh boy, they fucking right on that. So fuck this game, not worth recommending to anyone. And for those of you that still think it's cool to destroy copies of Shaq Fu, honestly, I think it'd be better if you did it with this game, because at least with Shaq Fu, it at least has some comedic elements to this. Not that I recommend that, unless, you know, you happen to have a game that's already broken beyond repair, but, you know... But if this game could suck your dick in the worst way possible and shove itself up your own asshole, then it would. So thank god this video is over, so thanks for watching, commenting, and have yourselves a good day by not playing Eternal Quest, or the RPG. Yeah, more like the retard poop game. Smoke weed every day.